The Chosen. The False Christ of the Chosen. Human, 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 human. And uh, Dallas Jenkins, of course, says, you know, why would I put the transfiguration in this show? How would that serve my story? And today we're going to dance on that third rail. This is going to be a hot button issue. You're either going to love it, you're going to hate it, you're going to be someplace in between. Layla Miller is going to be on to talk about her article over at Crisis. Uh, You know, I've talked about this before. I've gotten criticized by the chosen production company themselves because of my criticisms of them. What do you think? I'd love to know, but... Either way, we're going to have a conversation with Layla Miller. By the way, my name is Joe McLean. I host a radio program called A Catholic Take, where we look at the world through a Catholic lens. I'd love for you to hang out with us. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and let us know what you think in the comments below. Layla Miller, good morning to you. Thanks for your time. Good morning, Joe. It's great to be here. And yes, I, <laughs> I've gotten quite a bit of pushback uh, for criticizing this, um, this show. It's one of those things, you know, and I was listening to some of your other interviews in regards to this article that you wrote over Crisis. We're going to link to it, by the way, crisismagazine.com, but we'll put a link to the article in our show notes. You know, it's the Mary, it's the Mary, did you know Jesus? It's the BFF Jesus. It's the emotional Jesus. And I think that's the issue is, and you've really struck on this uh, quite a bit in your article and in your conversation about it. This is really about how we feel. We are approaching Jesus without reason, but with only emotion. Is that fair? I think that's absolutely the crux of it. Um, I'm very interested these days in looking at inversions, what I call inversions, which is where we, we you know, flip something and get it out of order. And, of course, our emotions should always be subordinate to our intellect and our will. And this show is you know, high octane emotion, and it's supposed to be. It's a soap opera. It is, uh, you know, target audience is women ages 18 to 45. That uh, they, the producers themselves say, you know, we're gonna, we have a very, very emotional new season for you. It is designed to hook you via emotions, and it is a, um, it, it's it's a way to use modern psychology and, and uh, draw, draw us into uh, being addicted to this particular uh, storyline and this Jesus and these people. And it is, a, it's, a, it's a soap opera. So um, I, I think that's exactly right, that emotion kind of fuels this show. And judging by the response from otherwise very faithful and very reasonable Catholics, that's what I'm getting back is this emotional response, if you dare say, this is not Catholic, this is not good for us. Um, The torrent of emotion back at me is just incredible. The reason why I stopped watching The Chosen, I only got to episode three. I got to the the wedding feast of Cana. That's as far as I could get. We were watching it as a family and I'm like, okay, we're done. I even shut the the episode off halfway through. I'm like, we can't do this anymore. It was so like, um, golly, it's like going into a, a church that's built in the round, like a spaceship church. You walk in and you're just like, what, where are we? What are we doing here? And that's kind of how it felt. But for me, anytime you depict Our Lady, like she's Betty Sue from Idaho, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm much more tolerable, as strange as it'll sound, I'm much more tolerable with bad depictions of Jesus than I am of Our Lady. Whereas in your article, you're really just focusing on the development of the character of Jesus Throughout the seasons, which I now I haven't watched, but it seems like he's really just devoid of take up your cross every day and follow me. The one characteristic about this Jesus, and I say this Jesus because it is not the Jesus, it is not our Jesus. Um, this take, this imaginary fictional Jesus, uh, the one thing you'll see everyone discuss under all the, the videos and, and uh, all the different um, social media of The Chosen is how human he is. They love, love, love. And now, of course, we know. I mean, there's no question, and I've never denied, and, and we don't deny that Christ was fully man and fully God. Um, but this, the, the people who follow this show and, and the actual makeup of this show is that this is a fully, a really human Jesus. Like, the humanity of Jesus is stressed so much that people are, so excited about that. They'll say it all the time. He's so human. It's just, this is the human Jesus. And I'm thinking to myself, have we not in the last 50, 60 years stressed the human Jesus enough? Like, where, what are we doing now? I think yeah. what we've done is we've made him just like us. 
He's the guy you can have a beer with. He's the guy you can play in the ocean with. He's the guy who laughs heartily and, you know, dances and, oh, I'm a goofball. I'm going to do a miracle. But first, I'm going to roll my eyes and make a joke, a sarcastic joke. And it's so... It departs so greatly from the, the the Catholic patrimony and what we know through our Catholic faith of how the faith wants to depict Jesus Christ, how Jesus, as the head of the church, has decreed that Jesus is presented to us, that people think, um, you know, that they're finding a new dimension of Jesus, and really, after 20 centuries, if this is new, if this is completely new to some people, and it is, then it's time to start thinking that this is actually another Jesus, that this is what St. Paul warned us about, um, which is, you know, beware of another Christ. And it's this fully kind of happy, clappy, goofy, yay, you know, we're just all buddies together, that kind of human Jesus, which is not the Jesus that we have seen in Catholicism for 20 centuries. And there's a reason for that. Mm. Layla, what about the Mormon connection here? I think a lot of people dismiss this as though it's not that big of a deal because there's just massive crowds and the success of Angel Studios and a lot of Catholic filmmakers are now going to Angel Studios to get their productions, uh, you know, actually completed. So what about the Mormon connection here? What is your take on that? Yeah, I always get wary because Mormons aren't even Christians. Um, they're not Trinitarian. Um, they uh, are in the ground floor of the production of this show. Um, very obviously Mormons are by their nature anti-Catholic as are Protestants. I mean, the whole name is protest. They're protesting the church. So you've got Mormons and Protestants who are the producers and on the, the, the bottom floor, you know, building this empire, which really it is a, a commercial empire making millions. And now it's a whole industry of catechesis, which is another horror story. Um, but that is problematic. We, we are not talking about, fellow Catholics making a wonderful, uh, I still would object to this serialized soap opera and fictionalized, but the fact that it's coming from people who do not um, sh even share Christianity with us, and then Protestants who literally, I don't know if people understand, uh, Dallas Jenkins' father was the man who wrote the Left Behind series and also the, um, with LaHaye, Timothy LaHaye, I think it was, who always, they, would, they had books calling the Catholic Church the Whore of Babylon. Right. And that's where Dallas Jenkins was raised. And it's his father who's writing the spinoff books that you can get on Amazon and things like that. So we are... <laughs> Tread carefully, um, you know, Catholics, we should really stick with Catholicism and not be emotionally pulled out because every little compromise we make, we don't understand. This is how we lose faith. This is how the devil gets us. And it's over time, it's incremental, and we won't recognize it. And many people, like you said, you've turned it off at a certain point. I turned it off before that because I'm from a Middle Eastern background, and those accents were like Borat to me. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> terrible, terrible production. They don't even get the accents right. This is horrifying. But I've seen enough really bad clips that I can't imagine going past that line. And all these Catholics are going past that line because mm. they like the show, and now we see it being used as catechesis for our Catholic schools and our, yeah. our parishes, and it's, that is extremely troubling. I got an article here from Bree Dale on her Substack. I'm going to link to this as well. A lot, of, a lot of Catholics don't know, but there is a court battle going on over who gets to make the most money off of the chosen uh, franchise. And it's Mormon against Mormon, which was interesting because Mormons typically don't sue each other in court. This is not, this is sort of a new thing, but it's become so successful, a billion dollar enterprise that they're fighting over the scraps on who gets to make the most take home. And it's Mormon against Mormon in court over who's going to make the most money. And Bree Dale reported on that last year. I'm going to link to it in the show notes over at the station of the cross.com forward slash ACT if you want to get in on that. But that's, I guess that's going back to my point here is, you know, all of these Catholics, and you talk about this extensively in your article, as well as in your interviews you've done on this subject so far, these Catholics, 
They, they, they will bite your head off. How dare you? This is just a great, fun, entertainment, family-friendly thing. But then there's there's the subtlety of it. And I'm reminded of the subtlety, which is very interesting. It's the first verse of Genesis chapter 3. The great Nahash, the, the, the dragon, the ancient serpent, when he, when he attacks Adam and Eve in the most intimate moment between a man and a woman in marriage, it, it, that is the moment that Nahash attacks. And the, the passage tells us that he is the most subtle of all creatures and when he does the talking and he's trying to get Eve to see the fruit that she is forbidden from eating because it was the command by God in Genesis chapter 2 to Adam and he talks about the goodness of it oh I can see it's so good it looks so good it's so juicy it's so wonderful it's going to taste good it's going to nourish my body the subtlety of the attraction what was the result what was the what was the actual consequence it was the fall of mankind. So maybe just maybe when we want candy, our teeth rot. The reality is I believe very passionately about why I think The Chosen is not good for Catholics, uh, especially for young people, because they could be misled or mis you know they could misunderstand who Jesus is. And we're talking to Layla Miller about her article over at the Cho over at the crisis called "The False Christ of the Chosen." crisismagazine.com. We're going to link to it in the show notes. Her website, by the way, is laylamiller.net. We'll link to that as well. Layla, welcome back to the show. So I remember in the conversation you had with Father Mateg here at the Station of the Cross, you talked a lot about uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. And I think this is, uh, this is going to be one of those things where a lot of Catholics are going to be like, I just don't understand what's wrong with it. What is, like, can you maybe summarize what are some of the big issues that the depiction of Jesus in this in this series are very very problematic for Catholics, especially in what, what our theology is. Well, I think again, uh, Christology, and I am not a theologian, and I kind of wear that as a badge of honor because I don't know if anyone's gone to the American um, Academy of Catholic Theologians lately, but they're all kind of progressive, uh, you know, women priest types. So I wear it as a badge of honor that I do not have a degree in theology, but um, people want to use the uh, argue against me by saying, "Well, you know, Thomas Aquinas said this, that, and that about Jesus's humanity," and I keep explaining, "I've never denied Jesus's humanity. Of course, he is fully man, but." Every Christological heresy pretty much has dealt with uh, an imbalance or a misunderstanding of the hypostatic union, right? That he is fully man and fully God in one person. And uh, pretty much all the heresies flow from that. So when you start to overemphasize one nature <laughs> over the other, and they specifically do this because they're, they're proud of doing this and everyone gets it because that's how everybody reacts human, 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 and uh, Dallas Jenkins, of course, says, you know, well, why would I put the transfiguration in this show? How would that serve my story? You know, how would that serve our story? And things like that, to downplay uh, repentance, to downplay why he came as human, to be the human sacrifice that could be the only bridge between uh, man and God to heal the rift and open the gates of heaven. For example, the Sermon on the Mount, which they have him completely, here's the logos, right? The word of God fumbling because he can't think of the words and he's got to have Matthew to help him. And he's, oh, he's nervous and he's trying to figure out how his presentation is going to come off. Okay. That's us. That's not the logos. That's not the word of God. And then when they do present the, the Sermon on the Mount, they leave off all that part, which is the most important is that, you know, we must repent and we must uh, be warned of what happens if we don't repent. He talks of hell and all that. Well, they conveniently leave all that off. So basically we have this fake human Jesus and we get into a ton of problems because we've already had that right for 50 and 60 years, but now it's being fed to us, not by Catholic catechists, but by Mormons and Protestants, you know, what could go wrong? Um, and so, you know, you come to these contradictions where, and, and this is the part where it really gets bizarre. You know, you'll see Dallas Jenkins in a lot of the notes to his fans under these, these, these videos and such say, uh, you know, someone will say, is this true? Is this gospel account true? Is this how Jesus really acted? And he'll say, well, you know, we, we, we bring in elements of fiction where we're, this is just an imaginary uh, scene that we're, we're putting in and it's fictional. And then in the same breath, he'll say, but this is, and I quote, the authentic Jesus. 
so, okay, which is it? And then, you know, you've got Catholics who say, well, this is just a, a, it's just a, it's just a show. You know, it's a flawed show. It's got problems. It's kind of fun, but it brings us into this great, you know, feeling of uh, be, knowing who he is and just being, um, you know, drawn into the, the times and, and all that, which is ironic because it's very anachronistic. It's very contemporary, the way they talk and act. So is it just a funny, flawed show, or is it serious enough that we are now using it for catechesis, which we've blown for 50 years, we are now using it for catechesis in schools and in um, CCD classes and, of course, in, in parishes. Which is it? You cannot have it both ways. And, you know, so, so I submit that there's, there's so much in our Catholic patrimony of 2,000 years, we don't have 20 lifetimes to go through what we, what we could mine out of those riches. Why are we going over here and spending hours and hours and even all of our catechesis now on some schlocky soap opera that wasn't even um, produced by people who love the church. It doesn't mm -hmm. make any sense. Now, I'll say this. I, I don't have an issue necessarily uh, with there being a, a series I don't, or entertainment. I have no problem with it. In fact, I've said it many times on this program, if I had George Soros kind of money, I'd be making entertainment like this. I, only the highest quality possible you know, would be good enough for, for the Catholic faithful, but I would make it fervently and orthodox Catholic. It would not be lacking in theology in any way, shape, or form. And I think therein lies the, the problem. I don't have an issue with entertainment. I have an issue with this weak, weakened uh, view of who these people actually were. And, and I feel this way about a lot of entertainment, not just the chosen. There's a lot of films that depict Our Lady in particular, but also Our Lord in very, like concupiscent ways they weren't concupiscent persons they didn't have the same draw towards sin as we do they experienced emotions just like we do in the difficulties anxieties fears and all the rest but they didn't react to them in the same way because of their lack of concupiscence and i'm reflecting on the uh, the visions of blessed Anne catherine emmerich right now in the life of our lady and there are so many moments that she talks about this where she's holding her divine child, knowing that this is God, yet she has to care for her child, breastfeed her child, etc. And there are these very human, very intimate moments that are just, it's just a glimpse of humanity between mother and child. And yet never at any time during the description of these moments, do we fail to understand the awe and wonder that this is God. That this is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. She never loses sight of that. It seems like that's the element that really gets lost in translation on the chosen, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. And judging from some of the things that uh, Dallas Jenkins has said, he's very possessive of this fake Jesus. He he told one concerned Christian um, that uh, you know if he has a problem with how he's portrayed him now. Uh, just wait till he. I don't want to say it, but just wait till he he makes him you know struggle to urinate in the morning on screen. So basically he's tweaking these, these Christians who are concerned with just what you said, these kind of lack of, of understanding of the regality and the, and the dignity of God and his mother, um, which has never wavered, right, in any Catholic art through the centuries or Catholic visions of you know, the saints or the encyclicals or all this. He's taking him and he's making him very flippant and he's being very disrespectful and very, um, you know, people love that about it. That's actually, that seems to be a feature, not a bug for a lot of people. Well, we finally get to see this irreverent side or this relatable Jesus and Our Lady. And we forget that the first consideration of everything that we do as Christians is, is this going to offend our Lord? Is this going mm -hmm. to offend Our Lady? Yes, these things are offensive because we do not see them anywhere else in Catholicism. And, and that is not to say we don't see their humanity, again, like, just like what you said, but you don't see the flippancy and the goofy, you know, kind of bring them down to my level because I want them to reflect me or I want her to be just like the chick that works at the 7-Eleven as one of my, you know, ex my, I have a Protestant friend who converted and she said, yeah, we always saw Mary as just, she's a chick that works at the 7-Eleven. She's just who she is, you know, some, right. some, oh. some chick out there. And that's how they want these characters to be just like us and yeah, no exactly so the offense against god is there the offense against our lady it just we should just hang our heads and and, and in reparation for what how he is portraying mm -hmm. them so irreverently 
Layla Miller, I'm grateful for your time today. The straw poll so far, what do you think of The Chosen? 19% say love it. 13% say hate it, don't watch. 39% say haven't watched it. 30% say watched it but have problems with it. If you want to vote, you certainly can. It's live right now on the YouTube feed. But Layla Miller, God bless you. God love you. I appreciate your time today. Thank you for getting up early and being on the program and sharing your, your article with us. God bless you, Layla. Thank you so much, Joe. Did you like that video? It's okay. You can admit it. It's perfectly fine. Hey, we cover the big stories of our day from inside the church to outside the church to all points in between. And we do it from a Catholic perspective. It's called a Catholic take. It's a radio program Monday through Friday. We live stream it right here on this channel, by the way. So make sure to subscribe, like, and share. We would be very grateful to you. And don't forget, you're going to want to watch this video right here because you don't want to miss anything.